There we go. Oh, yeah. What's good, my people? Patreon in the house. Shout out to all my patrons. All my new patrons. Like Pablo Garcia. FJ Sanchez. Mike Donald. Game Changer. Sacred Royalty. Anton Hills. A.K.A. More fire. One, 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 one. Oh, yeah. We got our guest in here tonight. You seen it. Y'all see what it is. Get your L's ready. It should be a good one. Peace to the gods and earth. On this wisdom, culture, freedom day. All being born to equality. That's what it is. Y'all might have seen some things on the internet. We're going to get into it. With no further ado. Peace to you. What's good, family? My name is Lord Jamal. Welcome back to You Know What I Mean? God cast. Digga Digga is... She's... I think she said she's on a plane right now or some shit. She might pop in later. And Godfrey, I don't know where, the, where he at right now. He might pop in too, but you know. I'm here, you know what I mean? And I hold shit down like I fucking, like I always do. Um. So yeah. Listen, I'm going to bring my guest in. I was just in Atlanta uh, this past week and uh, to do a face-off for our guest Cassidy and Hitman Holla. Um, But before I even got a chance to really do what I was supposed to do, and we'll talk about why I, I wasn't sitting in the chair I was supposed to be sitting in at that moment, you know, things went kind of left, and y'all might have seen it on the internet. Uh, we'll talk about it. Right about now, we'll bring my brother up on stage, hip-hop legend, Philly legend, battle rap legend. Ladies and gentlemen, my brother, Cassidy. What's good, King? Thanks for having me, King. How you feeling? Oh, hang on. That was my bad. There you go. What's good, King? I said, thanks for having me, King. You know, I'm happy to be here, man. Big fan of you. Every time I see you, I tell you, man, you know I love you and whatever you got going on. Plus, I got a lot going on right now, so it's only right we link up and make this shit make sense. Absolutely. Right back at you. Uh, mad love. Um, you know, when they asked me to... Uh, to host the face off and it was like Cassidy, you know, to me, it really didn't matter who the other person was like, you know what I mean? Like I fucks with Cassidy and if Cass if Cassidy's doing it, then hell yeah. Like I I'm down to, you know what I mean? I'm down to sit down and moderate that and all of that. For sure. Um, and, 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 you know, like I was saying, you might've heard, I kind of have regrets, you know, that was my first time meeting the brother ARP that night. Okay. Um, so, you know, I could tell that he was the owner of the league. He was introduced as the owner of the league. And 
he was like, yo, I got seven questions. Now I'm thinking he's going to give me these seven questions, but he was like, I want to ask them. You know what I mean? Not to interrupt you, but he was super excited that you was um a part of it, that you was coming through and, um, you know what I mean? Playing your part in the face off. I right. Guess, I, I guess soon as y'all had the conversation and it was confirmed, he started letting me know when he was announcing it and he was excited. So, right. You know and, I mean? and I was excited to do it. Uh, but like I'm saying, that was my first time meeting the brother. And, and it was just my first time, you know, doing one of these face off. So he said, I got seven questions. And he said that I'd like to ask. He said, so, you know, either you could go. He said, or I could ask the questions and then you can kind of like feed off of what I'm saying and go off that. So, you know, I'm, I do the knowledge first, you know what I mean? Before I do the wisdom. So I said, yeah, all right, cool. You go first. I'm going to do the knowledge to what you do. And then boom, bam, boom. But that being said, I kind of feel like I regret that because I feel like I would have handled it differently. And I don't feel like shit would have went the way that it went because and i told him this you know what i mean i just feel like he needed to uh insert himself more into the shit and have more control over it you know what i mean as a as a mediator slash moderator whatever the fuck you want to call it you know what i mean that's just my personal take on it um but well <clears throat> i think he got what he wanted <laughs> It went, it went viral. Well, one thing I'm going to say for him, he is pretty good at his job with any other artist. Like, if you look at any of other face-offs he did, any other time he had to handle artists, he pretty much do a good job. You know what I mean? But um, in that situation, it was pretty much too much to handle. Like, he was trying. He was trying to, like, you know, do as much as he could do. But on top of me being a... Um, just a free-minded dude that just, you know what I mean, be speaking his mind at will. On top of that, I know how to sell the fight. Um, Facts. I know, I know what make people interested in seeing battles. Every time I'm booked is um, chaos, is pandemonium. And not just off the strength of, the, of my name, but also on the strength of how I carry it and how I do things. So um, I had a big conversation with ARP. Um soon as we locked it in and i let him know that um like a lot of these leagues be having certain standards of promotion that you're supposed to do certain things in the contract like yo you do this right, and you right. do this because right. they need they need for these artists to promote and these artists don't be knowing what to do they don't got no guidance so you got to put that in the contract for them right but i let him know that i'm a different type of sandwich like i, I promote different nobody could do it like me and this time around, I got a different strategy. Don't expect me to do it exactly the same way I did it the last time. It's going to be a different form of promotion, but it's still going to resonate the same way. And it's going to make people want to watch the battle. Facts. So he knew I had a plan ahead of time. He knew that um, I had full control over everything that was happening. Even in the face off, you could see one time, one or two times he come over to me, look in my face. And he see me smile at him like, yeah, I got this. Like, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. He see I got it under control and everything is like, you know what I mean? I, I guess Hitman Holler was the one that was out of control. He was the one that was liable to, to do anything like right. make a mistake or do something wrong. He was the one that was liable to throw, throw the whole shit away. Me, I have full control over myself and the people around me. Right. And I just want to say that, especially to somebody that was there. You didn't see nobody. He was saying like I had 20, 30 people and trying to exaggerate. But the people that I did have with me, they was all under control. None of them never did nothing or violated or jumped through the roof. They was just fully under control just like I was. So I'm going to tell you, you know, as somebody that was there. Hang on. I was crushing up some blood. Um, As somebody that was there. I mean, you had a few dudes with you. There, uh, there was a few. I don't know if they was with you, but there was a few females there. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> that's part of what set them off was the females. 
Mm-hmm. He started talking about like, because first of all, I, I had said this to him later on. I said, because I ended up, you know, I said, shit, well, let's salvage this somehow, whatever. You was gone. I sat his ass down and interviewed him. I said, you know, you know where he got you, right? I said, the second he said, I'm tougher than you. Oh, that was it right there. That was the that was the beginning of the throwing him off his square. And and when I interviewed him, he said, nah, that wasn't it. I kept my cool at that point. But then when I when I looked back at it, because I didn't have to rewind right at that moment. When I looked back at it, oh, that was definitely the moment. And he was and that's what and that's what made it so beautiful. Cause I seen that I seen that clip of you talking to him and you told him that as soon as you lost it, when he said I'm tough, and he tried to argue with you and tried to argue the fact that I was the one that was initiating the the, the violence and standing up that. and and it's like he was saying a lot of stuff before he even got a chance to see the face off. Like some right. people be so in the heat of the moment, they don't even remember the past the correct way. So, you know what I'm saying? He telling all of y'all what just happened a different way than how it just happened. But when the video went out, everybody in the world got to see exactly how it did happen. You know what I mean? And regardless of what was said, this is a face off. And then and then it's battle rap. And battle rap, I see people say some of the worst things possible. You know what I mean? And a lot of dudes that I know that rap say that they couldn't battle rap because of that reason. They couldn't Bad. take they couldn't take a dude that they know ain't all up in your life. Face. Yeah, all in your and face yeah. and all the most disrespectful shit. And you Damn just gotta right. take it. Some people ain't built like that. Some people Damn can't right. tolerate that shit. Nope. So I can't. Um, I understand. And I and I know some of the worst things in battle rap um be said back and forth. And you gotta have like a rough skin. You gotta be able to take that shit. So with that being said, some of the worst things get said. So in the face off, if somebody say I'm tougher than you, and that can make you go through the roof, you don't belong in battle rap. Like you mm. can't control yourself over that. Mm. It's not like I do nothing at you. I didn't spit at you. I didn't smack you. I didn't trip you. I didn't physically do nothing to you to make you want to react like that. So. If, if it's something that I could say, especially in a face-off where you got the opportunity to talk back, sometimes nowadays with this technology, people could blog, set a whole narrative, and you can't really respond or answer back. So that might make you frustrated when you do answer back because they painted this whole picture and you wasn't able to respond. But when you right there in the face-off and everything that they could say, you could say something back, there's no reason for you to want to go run and grab a bag or talk about fighting or none of that. Like you should be able to hold your own with words, especially if that's what you do as a battle rapper. So well, this, this is what I was trying to tell him. I'm like, yo, bro, like you got to think WWE nigga, like think Floyd Mayweather. Like, like you can't take this shit seriously to that point. Like, but back to my original thing was, so when he's talking about how tough he is, when he's trying to prove how tough he is, um, talking about he knocked niggas out, some of the girls start laughing. Sure. And you'll see in the original face-off, he's turning around. Oh, yeah, y'all doing off that laughing and shit, but Google me. Da, 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 da. See, it was the laughter of the females, I think, that really... That was the next thing that pushed it. First, it was the I'm tougher than you. Then it was the laugh of the other females. Nah, he like one of them dudes. I figured them out. He one of them dudes that like to be the center of attention. He liked to get like attention. So whatever he did in his life, whether it was battle rap or whatever he did before that, he wanted to be a dude that get looked at as being in the in crowd, the cool guy, the dudes that people got positive shit to say about and the girls liking all of that. So when he feel as though he not that dude, he get crushed. Mm. Um, a lot of incidents in his life happened like that. Girls ain't recognize who he was or didn't know that he was Hitman Holler and he lost it. He flipping all out. It affects him. When the girls in the back chuckling every comment that's made and the girls is chuckling and they not agreeing with him, that's why he losing it. Google me. He going crazy because he can't take that. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, um... 
that's the issue that he got that he dealing with. And that's an issue that he not going to be able to just deal with right away. And because I know that he had a disadvantage, I know all of it, all of his weaknesses, ARP couldn't even get through one question before I made this nigga flip out and lose control. And he had the opportunity to scream and answer back. So imagine when we get on the stage and I got whatever amount of time I got to just talk my shit to this nigga. All of the girls that's there are going to be able to chuckle. All the niggas that's there are going to be able to respond. And you're not going to be able to say nothing back. You're just going to have to stand there and listen. So if I could get under your skin in a face off, just imagine what I'm going to do when we get on that stage. No, nah, that's facts, though. That's facts, bro. This is a, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, you can't stand the heat. Get out the kitchen. Like, like. There wasn't one question really asked. Like, y'all didn't even talk about battle rap. Y'all didn't get into no questions, really. He used to like, battle and battle rappers. So these dudes, um, most of the battle rappers ain't accomplish a lot. It's like a handful of them that did take it to another level. But um, the majority of them ain't really accomplished that much, especially outside of battle rap. So if they was battling a dude like Hitman Holla, It'd be intimidating. He had talked his money talk and success and the things that he did outside of battle rap. And it'd really crush them other battle rappers. They'd feel some type of way about it because they they do know that he doing a lot more than them. And they do know they got a lot more to accomplish. So they wouldn't know how to respond to those type of things. But when you say that to a nigga like me, it's like, come on, man. I'm not letting none of that shit that you would say to these average niggas fly. Like, and... I got a response to anything that you could possibly throw out. The shit that you usually say to niggas and it make you seem like you just that ball. You say it to me and I say something back to make you look corny for even saying it. And he not used to that. On top of that, he not used to the energy that comes with battling me. It's a lot more than just writing the rounds and battling me. It's a lot of energy that comes with it. He never seen as many tweets about him. This many grams, this many posts, this many blogs talking about him, about him getting as many views. He never seen as many, this much attention on himself at one time. Even though he a big successful battle rapper, when he had battles, the attention wasn't like this. The people that was tapping in and interested wasn't like this. He never experienced this before. And even if it was close to this or anywhere near close to this, he was usually... um the higher guy his name was first it was hitman versus somebody but now it's cassidy versus him i'm like in control of this energy i'm the reason why our face off already did a million views it did it in three days people trying to get their battles the actual battles to do those type of numbers it's like um big things that's happening in hip-hop right now and that ain't even do them numbers and my face off did them numbers mm -hmm. so he ain't experienced this type of energy before. He trying to front and act like he did, but he know he didn't. So um, that be bringing different emotions out of dudes too. That's why you see when I do face-offs with anybody, everybody don't handle it the same, but you can see that nobody is comfortable like they normally be when they in the face-off with me. It's just too much energy and it's too much real shit. Let me ask you, because I asked, I asked him this and he kind of acted like, he ain't know what I was talking about. <laughs> but do you feel there's a certain uh there's a certain energy of battle rappers towards dudes that were successful in in the industry? Do you feel like there's a certain, you know, and especially if they try to come into battle rap and do they think? Do you think there's a certain resentment like Man, y'all niggas, you know, yeah, y'all made records and, you know, because I feel like a lot of battle rappers don't make good records. You know what I mean? Like, you could probably count on one hand some battle rappers that transitioned from battle rap and were able to start making songs. Um, Why that is, I'm not fully sure, but... I'm sure I could explain it to you. The reason why that these battle rappers can't make songs is because... Um, writing battle raps is nothing like writing song raps. People just think that because it's a rap and you rhyming that it's similar and it's the same thing. So if you could write a dope battle rap, you could just go in the studio and write a dope song. But that's not how it works. 
um, a lot of these battle rappers or the majority of them like use cheat codes in battle rap. And yep. one of them is where I put a, a lot of words in one bar of a space. Like normally on beat, <clears throat> the time period that it would take me to be able to rhyme would be one bar. Four beats of the, I mean, four beats, one bar. I would have to bring some type of rhyme. Right. And whether I rhyme three times in that one bar, one time, two times, four times, or whatever. But I still got a rhyme at the end of that four bars. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that four beats, one bar. Right. And then the rhyme come again at the end of the next bar, what makes it two bars. That's where the rhyme connect. That's the normal old school formula. Right. But a lot of these dudes, will cram enough words that would take up two bars worth of space, sometimes even three bars worth of space. But they'll say it in a way where the last line is the rhyme and you'll be able to catch it when there's no beat. Right. And then they'll do that again, rhyme three lines worth of material to rhyme it again. And that'd be the punch and you'll go crazy when there's no right. beat. Right. But if it was a beat involved, it'd be impossible to say those words on beat. It would never Absolutely. fall on beat. So that's how these dudes is programming themselves to think, like off beat with too many words aligned. So when it come down to them riding a beat and listening to a beat and having to make music and compress them thoughts on time, it's difficult to do. It's not like you could just snap your finger or just take these same raps that you say on stage and just say them on beat. It's not going to register like that. Let me so, add on. So it takes right. practice, and that's the reason why these battle rappers can't make songs because they don't practice. They're not in the studio. They're not working as far as um, making music is concerned. And that's the same reason why most of these dudes that make music couldn't step in the ring in battle rap because they're not practicing on what's required to battle rap. They're not knowing the ins and outs and the requirements that come with battle rap. They would just get on the stage and rap their raps the same way they would do on the song, and they wouldn't register. Well, let me let me just add on to what you're saying of also why I feel like a lot of battle rappers are not successful artists is because a lot of battle rappers, yes, they do that cheat code, but then they're also performers. They're visual performers. You can't see like a lot of times they'll be doing animate shit. You know, they'll come up to a nigga and do all of this shit and or, or there'll be little sign language shit that they do that the crowd can see. When you're on a record, you I can't see you doing all of that shit. So that takes away from the power of when they're doing those raps and shit like that. The fact that you can't, they can't use the visual aids um, sure. to, to add to the performance. Um, yeah, I think it's all of that combined. And I'll be not, comparing it. I'll be comparing it to like stand up comedy and like um, movie comedy. <clears throat> It's a different, it's a different form of comedy. Like even though they both supposed to make you laugh, wow. um, Yo, stand up pretty. comedy has to be different than movie comedy. Sometimes movie comedy you might not catch right away. You might gotta rewind a scene and watch the scene over to actually catch the actual comedy. But when you do catch it, it's hilarious and you just die for a long period of time. It might make you laugh for three, four minutes. You mm -hmm. might gotta pause the movie to right. finish laughing before you could go on because it's so funny. Now with stand up, you don't got that option to rewind. You don't got that option to really pause. Now you do with the technology, but is originally made not to be like that. So the jokes that you're supposed to get is right away. And not only you, but everybody else supposed to get it all at the same time so that the laugh can be huge all at the same time so it can seem like the comedian is rocking the crowd. And that's the reason why they put a lot of like fake laugh tracks on um, stand up comedy. And even when they was trying to do quarantine comedy in the beginning, when there was no crowd and there was no laugh track, no matter how funny the jokes was, it still was horrible because you wasn't hearing no laughter. You wasn't hearing people respond. So it didn't seem as funny to you as when you heard maybe not even a good joke, but everybody going crazy. And it's the same thing with battle rap. These dudes don't really know how to decipher whether a line, even a whether a line or a bar is dope. They only going by the reaction from the crowd. So the same way if the crowd laugh, they think the joke is funny. The same way if the crowd go, oh, or respond, they think the bar was hot. 
But if right. somebody say a bar and the crowd don't react, then they think that it wasn't hot because they're not really using the science. They just going by opinion and other other reasons. So I'll be giving those type of analogies. But at the end of the day, it's only certain comedians that could do it the old school way before video, like even in movies and on TV and even before video and stand up that could just go like on radio where only you can hear the audio and they could still make you laugh. That's difficult. You can't see them. They can't like do no funny movements. They can't do nothing to make you laugh like that. It all has to be with their words. And that'd be way more difficult. You would have to be way more of an advanced comedian to be able to do stuff like that. So um, that's what I want under people to understand. They got to understand the science and the complexity of what these dudes do to be able to appreciate what they do. And they know that's what I do understand. And that's what I'm bringing to the table. And I'm helping the fans understand. And that's why they're a little frustrated with me, man. Because they know it's going to either require them to either stop working because people not going to want to hear that shit or they going to even have to work harder. And you know, these niggas is lazy. They want a quick way to a bag. They want easy success. They want to just write a rap or two, put it out and get rich. They don't really want to grind. So when I'm telling dudes that they need to work harder and dedicate more time, they don't want to hear that. And that's why they get frustrated with me and try to block me out. Try to make it seem like the shit I'm saying don't make sense. I'm delusional. He's not making no sense. But if you look at it, it's all registering. And um, maybe certain people that do it might give a fuck about what they saying. But the actual people that's cutting the checks, the league owners, the the um the blog owners, the, the vlog owners, all of the people that's really involved on the business side know how much energy I bring to the coach and know I'm valuable and know I'm needed. And they wish that other battle rappers would act like me, perform like me do shit like me, not exactly like me, but similar so that it could be more energy revolved around battle rap so that everybody could be better off, not just the battle rappers, but like I said, the bloggers, the league owners, even the people that do security for battle rap events would be better off if dude just dedicate more time, take it more serious and stop playing with this shit. Right. Well, for instance, we, the, the, the league didn't set up this interview right here. We set this up on our own self. I hit I had my people hit your people and you know what I mean? We made this shit happen. Um, and as soon as I had your name, as soon as you involved, as soon as they said it was you, it's automatic. I mean, I'm a grinder anyway. I try to grind and you know I mean, do as much as I can anyway, but your shit is huge and I'm a super fan. So as soon as they said you, I'm locked in. Plus it only made sense because you was there. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Back. So it only it definitely only made sense from, I mean, this first interview to be with you because he was there. Right. And I saw I saw the interview and you was like, yo, why is he telling Lord Jamal? Like he was there, like right there. Like, happened, like, like you ain't gotta explain it again. Um, but you know, I guess he had to get it off his chest. You know, I was saying to him, like, listen, man, because he all Cassidy whack. Listen, no, 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 no. You ain't gonna say that to me. Cassidy got bars. Well, then why is he getting booed and all this? I said, because the fucking crowd could be on some bias shit. You ain't you can't tell me that motherfuckers is uh can't be up in there and put mad people in the front of the crowd to to try to influence the shit. Like I said, but me, if I was a judge of one of these motherfucking shits, that I wouldn't allow that to influence me. I might take it into consideration how they handle the crowd, but if I see some bullshit is going on that's trying to the crowd the crowd's trying to influence me, nah, I know how to actually listen to what niggas is saying. And for me, you know, a dope rapper is a nigga that could say some shit one time. And I remember, I remember lines out of what he's saying. That one time, that one rhyme. You know what I mean? You ain't got to say it a bunch of fucking times. Like, and you've done that to me many fucking times. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and Lord Jamal, I wasn't at my best at the mother battles because I was feeling disrespected that they had put a dude like me that put in so much work and not just put in work myself, but also um, a student, like been studying the game. I just released a record called The Four Elements talking about hip hop and the four elements and how I, I was raised and how I was brought up to be the dude I am. Well, we're so going to talk be, about that. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, like I'll be, I be, I be studying 
Like, I, and I played a huge part in hip hop. So for them to bring me back and put me against a battle rapper that ain't really accomplished nothing and they even win all of his battles. For them to put me in a battle with a dude like that, I was feeling disrespected. So I wasn't bringing my best. We talking really, about good. Um, all of them, all of the dudes that I battled up until this point. What you battled? I wasn't so? really. I'm a casual the disaster. Battle disaster rap goods. Rap I don't arson. follow it hard like that. Disaster was my first battle when I came okay. back for the um, and then I battled uh goods, and then my last battle was Arsenal. So, all three of those dudes um. They big for the culture, like as far as battle rap and um leagues and shit like that. They play a huge part. Like they did a lot. They 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 not just newcomers. They like dudes that was playing their part for a long well, I time. I know all their names. You so, know what I mean. I've seen. I'm not, a few I'm not trying to disrespect. Battles. I don't want the culture to think that I don't understand the part that they played, or I don't got no respect for them at all. Or I'm trying to like I don't I'm not familiar with battle rap or what they did. Like, no, I know the part that they played and what they did for battle rap, but that's it. And I just want them people to know the part that I played for battle rap and what I did for the culture. And then on top of that, doing so much more that if you put me in a ring with them dudes, I was feeling disrespected. That's the reason why I wasn't bringing my best. Sometime for them battles I have up to seven, seven to nine rounds worth of material written out. And when I go on the stage, I wouldn't say the best shit because I felt as though these dudes wasn't saying their best shit and I shouldn't be battling them anyway. And when I was cooking, like when I came back and I beat Disaster, their response wasn't right. They wasn't responding like a dude took 15 years off putting all this work. And is the reason why all these leagues exist. Come back after all this time and do his thing. I wasn't getting a it wasn't the right response that I was looking for. So that's why when I went in against these dudes, I wasn't giving it my all. It's not that I, people think I wrote the best raps that I could possibly write at the time and went out there and said it with the best delivery that I had possible. And that's what you got. Nah, that's, that's not it at all. Like, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't really in the right place at that time because of those reasons. I was feeling disrespected, um, business reasons. And the way the shit was set up, it was like me against everybody. But I had to, I had to do that to make the culture shift in the direction that I wanted it to go in. If I would have came in and just fell in line and did what everybody else did, the culture wouldn't be shifting like how it is now. So I had mm. to make a sacrifice. And making that sacrifice required a lot of people to be mad at you. And a lot of them people got fan base and a lot of people that support them in the battle rap culture. So it's like you against the world when I first came back. I just knew it was going to take time to, for people to understand what I was doing. The way I was shifting the culture. And now that they starting to understand, it's a different energy now. It's not necessarily the same as it was in them battles. Plus, I learned a lot from them battles. And not only um, am I going to be better just because, no, not just because it's a battle set up. I still feel disrespected with them putting me against Hitman, even though he a little more successful than them other battle rappers. He's still just a battle rapper, and like I still feel disrespected. But it's not about Hitman. It's just I got a point to prove to the culture. That's why I just dropped three albums in the last six months and about to go on stage and wipe the floor with this nigga to show niggas that I'm a different breed of rapper. I'm the greatest. Don't compare me to no battle rapper or no industry nigga. I'm a different breed. I'm a different type of rapper. I'm in my own category, and I want to stay like that. And I, it was a long time that people ain't, um, people knew that 15 years straight, but now they starting to doubt it. They starting to question whether I'm the golden, what I'm able to bring to the table. So that's the reason why I'm a wipe the floor with Hitman, not because he hit man or it's a big battle or because of this, just because I got a point to prove to my fan base and the people outside of my fan base that's been doubting me for a little minute. So um, all of this shit is just preparation for the battle. But I hope that man don't lose focus on what's important when we get on the stage. He going to have to rap and do all this performance shit that they say he do. And the same way anybody could pull up one of his battles and watch it, so can I. I got my computer right in front of me. I could pull up the shit just like you and watch it. And I see this so-called performance that y'all say he got, and he going to need a lot more than that, man. A lot more than them bars that he said. They tried to say he got bar heavy against Bill Collector. I watched that. He going to need way more bars than that. He going to need way more performance than he ever brought to the table to be able to even... They even make it an interesting battle because I'm about to go crazy on this nigga. 
Do you plan on using the cheat code? Uh, a bunch of them, man. Because and I know them all. You, I they they much, acting like they want I, you to use the cheat code. Yeah, and I pretty much invented them. Like a lot of dudes is uninformed in case they came into the game late. They're not aware that a lot of this stuff that they think these dudes are responsible for doing, I did previous to them. And these mm. dudes was fans of me and they was listening to me. And that's how they incorporated what I did into what they do to make what they do possible. So it's not like I don't know the cheat codes. I know the science like the back of my hand. And that's the reason why these dudes be messing up. They just sporadically write raps. They don't understand the science of how they do it. But I do. I understand all of the cheat codes, everything that they do. And that's the reason why I'm going to be able to bring that to the table, um, show a different side than people think I'm capable of. They think I'm about to just get on stage and rap the same way because they so used to every other battle rapper doing that. You can look at these dudes and pull up a battle from 12 years ago or pull up a battle yesterday and they rap in the same way. They doing the same slogans. They beginning around the same way, ending it the same way. Mm -hmm. They doing the same low power moves that they got every time. The same things that they say is performance, the same hand movements and gun sounds, they do every battle. <laughs> but they say that's performance. Me, they expect me to be like them, like me to just keep coming on stage right. doing the same thing. And you're never going to see that. Like, I'm going to keep reinventing myself. I'm going to keep growing. And every time you see me on the stage, I'm going to be a better person. But this time, I'm just not going to hold back because I feel insulted. This time I'm not going to have nine rounds and spit the three worst rounds and then do it this song afterwards when I'm blacking out. Now, nah, this time I'm going to wipe the floor this, with this nigga on the stage. I'm going to make an example out of this nigga on the stage. And then you never know what's going to come after that. So, like, yeah, back to my original thing. Do you think that battle rappers hate on industry rappers? Um, There's a certain resentment. I'm not maybe not. I hate, can't put them. I can't it. put them all. I can't put them all in the same category because it's different type of battle rappers. Um, a lot of them is alike, but there's certain ones that. They Hold up. But a, a lot of them, a lot of them do um. Hate on people more successful than them. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And and people that accomplish more than they than they accomplish, and then and then and more than in, than they understand how to accomplish. Like, they don't even understand how they're going to get from where they at to where they want to be. And that's why they get frustrated with you when you seem like you got it figured out. But um, all they got to do is just, you know what I'm saying, tap in. And I give them a little bit of advice. I'm not going to give them all of the science. But when these dudes be tapping in, I do be giving them a little bit of advice that be beneficial for them to get better. Let's rewind a little bit. Let's go back. But, oh, another thing to add to that question, the reason why they jealous is because they feel as though there's a lot more money in the industry than it is in battle rap. So they feel like they're getting the short end of the stick, even though they doing the most work. They they thinking the hardest. They putting the dopest bars together. They actually got to take a nigga spitting and talking crazy in their face. And they still getting the, the least amount of money. And it's a dude that it just go in the booth and go, hun -a, hun -a, hun -a, and just don't leave some shit and get money. So they All feel right. like, what the fuck? And they feel like if you in the industry, you a part of that. And you coming back to their side to take money from their side and take yeah. energy from their side. But they can't go to that side and take money and energy. So that's the reason why they be frustrated. And that's what they thought I was doing until they started to realize that I'm different than that. I'm not even in the industry. I'm really, a, I, I really am the culture. I am battle rap. This is what I represent and been representing it before any of these leagues started. Mm. So now that they starting to understand the truth, they starting to take me different and respond different. Like I said earlier, it just take a little bit of time. Everybody not going to respond right away. Like, and I mean, everybody ain't even the same on the same intellectual level to be able to understand information the same. Some people get it right away. Some people might get it next week, next month, next year. But um, people definitely going to get it because the truth is undeniable. When did you get uh, exposed to hip hop and, and when did you transition into being a participant, practitioner? Uh, Who put you on to hip hop? When do you remember first hearing it? Well, yeah, that's a good story. Um, 
I got an older brother, died, my God brother. He pretty much raised me like, you know, my pop, I still know my pop, but my pop wasn't actually around. So he didn't raise me. My God brother died, was 11 years older than me. He was in the street, you know what I mean? Taught me how to box, like um, taught me all of the street shit, but he also was a genius and smart and always had me like thinking and using my brain. So he was the one that was really putting me on the, not just hip hop. I was a fan as like a kid of the, like the normal shit to come on the radio, just regular shit. But I'm talking about underground shit, real lyricists, real bars teaching me the science. He was the first to do that. And um, um, actually, um, I remember when your song Punk Jump Up to Get Beat Down, that came out. I bought two cassette tapes. I bought one, one for his birthday for him. Cause like, you know what I'm saying? He was into that type of, into that type of rap. And when I first heard that song, just the, the, the way the beat was sounding and how aggressive niggas was on that track, I was losing it. I couldn't believe like that shit. So I had to buy that shit for him. And I remember that this was before I even wanted to rap. Right. But this one, I was just a super fan of rap. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was so, a lot so of he, he got me into it like that. You know what I mean? And, um, uh, sometimes I would go over, this when I was in North Philly, I would go over one of my friend's house. He had like, we all had Genesis games at the time. And on Genesis games, if you go to the option mode, it's like um they would have instrumentals to all of the boards, the beats, like to all of the boards. So if you got the right type of games, some of the boards would have like hip hop type of beats with instrumentals and they would constantly play. So it was like a loop of the beat because it was on option mode so it would constantly right. loop so we would just let that play and write that's raps fine. to it oh that's so dope. that was the first time i started writing raps with my friends and um but i ain't take it serious because it was only a few bars it wasn't even like a full verse and we was all saying it playing so i ain't really take it serious that i was a rapper but when i got in the fourth grade you know i was like um always smart always got straight a's never like was behind in academics so a lot of times I would play around and be the class clown because I already knew the work. So I was in an after school program and, a, and, a, and a, one of the teachers was asking around the class, like what y'all want to be when y'all grow up, what y'all think y'all want to do when y'all get older. So they going around the class pointing to people. So when they get to me, they ask me and I'm like, man, everybody giving the generic answers, like a doctor, a lawyer, a fireman, I want to <laughs> be this. So when they get to me, I'm like, man, I'm going to be a rapper, man. I'm gonna be like I'm gonna be a rapper. I'm gonna be doing my thing like that. So the teacher said, "Oh yeah, you gonna be a rapper?" Well, they knew they must have knew I was trying to be some class clown or something when I said it. So the teacher like, "All right, well, if you want to be a rapper, write a rap about this fire prevention class and come to the program tomorrow and say it for the class, and the class will let you know if you got what it takes to be a rapper or not." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So she put me on the spot, and I'm like, "Fuck." So that was the day I really went to the house and wrote my first rap, like for real, for real. And I wrote it about fire prevention. And I studied it that whole night, memorized you it. remember again. that teacher's name? Because that was a good fucking task right there. That was going to make you or break you. I know, man. And I don't because it wasn't even really a teacher. It was actually an after school program, a fire prevention program. Mm. And so it wasn't really a teacher. It just was like a the, the head of the program i don't know if they was an actual teacher or just like an older person and i was so young at that time i don't really know like you know what i'm saying everybody old seemed like a teacher at that time like if they run the class they had teacher i don't really know the exact role but i know it was an after school program and i don't remember but i know i came and said the rap the next day to the after school program and they went crazy he mm. was hollering and screaming and asking me all these questions and running up to me and grabbing on me. And I just felt like, wow, like I was able to make people go crazy with something I just thought about and wrote down. Like I ain't have on no newer sneakers. I ain't like right. get no different haircut. I ain't do nothing different. All I did was think of something, wrote it down and said it. And they going crazy like this. So from that point on, I said, oh, I'm going to be a rapper. Like, I love this feeling, and I want to be the best at it. Like, if this is my first rap, and I got that response, imagine if I really worked on it and got nice, like, what I could get. So but that was your first taste of fame, basically. Yeah, and that was when I decided I wanted to be a rapper and to be the best. And I was in the fourth grade, so wow. most people, 
want to rap because they want to be successful. They want to they want to fuck chicks. They want to get jury. They want to drive cars. They want to go in clubs and shut it down and get their own section. They want they want to reap the benefits that come from being a rapper, and they want financial stability. But this was before I even was paying any bills. I ain't even understand like right, right. financial stability at that time. I wasn't even really interested in money at that time. So that wasn't the reason why I said I wanted to rap. And that's the reason why I probably still to this day go in a different direction than a lot of MCs and rappers is because the reason why I want to do it. It was so it was more for the accolades of just how you made people react towards you than thinking about what you was going to get out of it. For sure. And that, still, re- drives, and and that still drives you. Understanding, then I grew, start understanding figurative language and why I was making them respond and start studying that and how artists before me was able to make people respond and what you could do with the science to make people respond quicker or even more. And that's the reason why I was able to come up with the punchline, every line style. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was people punching before me. It was people doing using figurative language and saying slick shit before me. But they would do it sporadically. Whenever it came to their mind or it felt like it was time, they would do it. But I, I started a style where it's like every single line is a punch. Every single thing I say, sometimes it might be a punch within a punch. Mm. Everything I'm saying is figurative language or something that's going to make you respond crazy. And the reason why I came up with that style is because that's the reason why I like the rap, make people respond. And that's what pretty much battle rap is. That's why they got me fucked up. There's certain things I might be missing because I've been gone for a long period of time and they used to some other shit. But as far as making people respond on bars and, and raps, and like you said, making people be able to remember what you said, it's sticking to you. Like, that's what I specialize in. So all I, all I got to do is figure out the slight adjustments to make it apply the right type of way to these new fans. And then there's nothing they're going to be able to do with me. And a little bit of adjustments that I, I need to make, you don't got to go to college to learn how to do it. You don't have to um, go with the monks and meditate and go through all of these adjustments to learn mm-hmm. how to do these little adjustments they want me to make. For me to swing my arms or make a gun sound or do a little move or, you know what I'm saying, explain or act out everything, every line to make people, un- like, that ain't really, that's easy. That's that shit I used to do as a kid. So... For me to bring that back, I felt like I was stepping back. I felt like I had to dumb it down. And I wanted to take the science to the next level, which wasn't that. But I see people not ready for that now. And for me to dumb it down actually is easier. So when people see me this time, I guarantee everybody going to say that that was the best that they ever seen me on stage. They never seen nothing like it. But it's going to be a dumbed down version of myself for those reasons. Well, I feel like... Like we were saying, it's an audio. This battle rap shit is an audio visual medium. So I don't know if adding visual aids is necessarily dumbing it down or is it accentuating the medium that you're working within? You see, not not necessarily the hand movements and the performance. That's what I'm adding to it to a little more of that. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about actually the bars, the direction I go in. Like sometimes I might be doing the complex form of the science that might take eight bars for you to catch. Right. And I'm thinking since battle rap has been doing two bar, four bar setups since the beginning of time. If I was to do an eight one, it is show the advancement of the science. It is show that how dope I am and how deep the thought was. But if the crowd is not ready for that, if they ready to respond after the two bars or the four bars, and they don't even catch the thought or the idea because they didn't even give you time to finish it. And they already responding before they can even catch the idea. So they missed the thought completely. Mm. So it's advancements of the science, the amount of syllables and the actual thought is advanced. Nobody never did it before. So it's only yours. And the, 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 the um, the energy that it takes to create it is difficult. But a person not going to understand it if they're on stage and they can't catch it. So that's what I mean, forms of dumbing it down. Like, I'm so used to making that movie type of comedy, that that analogy I gave you. I'm so used to making movies that when I get on the stage to do stand-up, you know what I mean? After 15 years, it's a little different. So I got to make certain adjustments. 
But at the end of the day, I'm still the best at writing jokes. I'm still the best at delivering them. I still got the, the, the crazy image. I still got everything and all of the experience. Only thing I got to do is make these little slight adjustments to, to, you know what I mean, to do my stand-up again. So that's where I'm at with it. And niggas going to see the difference this time around. That's what's up. Um, how'd you uh, how'd you first hook up with uh, Swizzy and all that? How'd that happen? Um, I was battle rapping in Philly. I was battle rapping. I was on a show called Decipher. It was a um, Radio One station, and they had it was Zulu. He had this competition where dudes battled. So I was winning that competition for months and months at a time. So much that they retired me and made me a radio personality to judge other people's battles and so that really yeah so that's how i got popular in the city but this was before social media nobody knew what i looked like so i started running around the city battling a lot so people would know that i was the dude from the radio and how i look right so once i did that i got the city on smash everybody that was coming through the city asking for artists or who was hot my name was coming up so i was getting a lot of opportunities and offers around that time Mm. And um, I ran into Swiss Beats' father, TD the Negotiator. He was my manager back then. And um, he the one that bought me to Rough Riders. He met me in Philly in a barbershop with Super and Press, got my information and called me out to New York. When I came out to New York, I met his brothers, D and Y. They was the CEOs of Rough Riders. And that's how I got my first deal when I was 17 years old with Rough Riders. And wow. I signed with two other dudes, Shiz Lansky and Kyle Akbar. They was my team from Philly. Um, we wasn't a group. I was a solo artist, but because it was a lit situation, I knew Rough Riders was on and there was an opportunity. I wanted to include them because they was my team, even though we wasn't a group. I'm like, y'all know my raps. I know y'all raps. We could get in there and say it like we a group and we probably all get an opportunity. Right. So that's how we did it. And that's how it came together. Um, being down with Rough Riders, Swiss was big over there at the time as a producer. And that's how we developed our relationship. I was signed to Rough Riders, but I didn't have any distribution. I ain't have no budgets open. I just was around grinding. So I took it upon myself to start battling again, even though I wasn't in Philly. I'm in other places, different states. But if I battled like how I was in Philly, that's what got me the deal. So now that I got the deal, if I take the same approach, it's going to get me to get in distribution and getting out there and letting people know that I'm worth something. So I started doing that, battling again. And that's how Swiss... Um, started to get a liking for me and because he was doing this thing he was about to start his own production company and he needed an artist so he wanted me as a solo artist and that's how we was able to start full surface records and once we started that production company i got an artist there with sony bmg j records and that's how i released all the music y'all know hotel i'm a hustler all of that music that's how we came together to do it like that but it all started from rough riders when i was 17 and me and TD in the barbershop in Philadelphia when I was already battle rapping and doing my thing. So what, what was the name of the group that wasn't a group? Like, did y'all have a name for it? Um, Not when we went to New York. But after we had the meeting and they liked us, I came back down and we had a um, meeting. And we thought of the name, Larceny Family. Mm -hmm. So we was Larceny. We was Larceny. That was the name of the group. And um, we thought of that after the meeting. So we wasn't even a real group. We just became a group. Because your IG name is Cassidy, uh, Cassidy Larceny. Yeah, and that's that's um, that was my first group. That's the team. And then after a while, Larceny was just a three-man group. But eventually it grew to a team, a family. So um, a bunch of people started becoming Larceny family. And... Um, Later on in life, I, I developed other production companies and things like that. But Larceny is still the family. Even though we're not in a three-man group no more, it's still like a family and click. That's why my name is that on social media because it's still a team. And a lot of people is in Larceny all around the world playing their part in supporting. What do you think is uh? What do you think is in the water in Philly that that uh? reads the kind of rappers that philly is known to have philly be having some fucking dope ass rappers what's that all about is it in the cheese steaks what's it in was it the maxes what the fuck is it um 
really I think it's the location um and the situation in the city. Like um it's a lot of poverty. Um niggas is fucked up in the city. And the location is close to the to the Mecca, like it's close to New York where everything started. So they was like close to the trusty area, like they right there. It's like you're able to get all the information, know what's going on in New York and all of those things. But at the same time, it's further down south. So, you know what I mean? Different slang and different accents and different type of food and different people. So you was able to get the both best of both worlds, like a little bit of down south and a little bit of up top in New York in that area. So... And then with it being so much poverty and, you know what I'm saying? And um, it, it just made a lot of competition in the city. And I guess the certain artists that was able to get light was competitive too. So it made the people that want to follow them and want to come after them be super competitive. And um, that's just the energy of the city, even in sports. Like, um, that's just how they be, man. And they like they like you to be a winner. Like when you winning, they all on your side. Everybody love you. But when right. you losing, they the same people that was loving you will turn their back right on you. They don't fuck with you when you losing. They like to win because they competitive. So that's just the energy of the city. Um, I know it probably it, it's like that in a lot of cities. I mean, a lot of cities is competitive, but um, I guess the environment where it's at, the location, the situations that niggas dealing with that's in the city. I guess all of that play a part in the, the reason why it's dude so competitive. Um, um, lyrical at the same time because they close to where lyrics started, but at the same time they further down south to where more flows and bounces is at. So I don't know. I guess maybe it's, it, it got a lot to do with a lot. Um, the artists that came out, I know I play a huge part, with, like I said, with me getting on so far back in the day. And me being so competitive, just starting off a battle rap. And people knowing that I was just a regular just dude from the city, just battle rapping. And then I was able to put out these records and get plaques and do it big. So that's inspiration for a lot of other people to be competitive too. So. I mean, how did that feel at that time when you, you know what I mean? Just after just being a regular dude and just now you done came out. You know what I mean? You a, a dude, young dude from Philly, and you working with Swiss Beats. You got fucking joints with R. Kelly and all kind of crazy shit. Like, what? What? How was it? Just synthesizing all of that, and and and. I think I would have took it different if the reason why I wanted to be in the business was for that reason. I would have been more happy and more content with what was going on. Mm. But I wanted to be in the business to be the best. So I needed outlets to get my music out and let people hear I was the best. And that necessarily don't go with doing good business. So if my first album come out and my first two singles is Hotel and Get No Better, that might prove people that, to people that I can make good records. That might prove to people that I can cross over. That might prove to people that I also could get the ladies what a lot of MCs can do. It could prove a lot, and it's good for business. But as far as you being the best, how can a person hear those songs and say that you're the best from those songs? It's not going to let people think that you're the best. It's not showing you the level of skill that you got and like where you able to take it. So right. if I was in it for those reasons, just for money and success and to be charting and all that, I would be super excited at that time. Right. But I was kind of disappointed because... They mm. wasn't really getting the real me. So mm -hmm. I'm constantly fighting. And with the business I was doing, it was a fight trying to get people to understand where I'm coming from and what I'm talking about and what I mean and all of those things. So I wasn't in the best place at that time. And that's the reason why I was determined to drop more of a harder single like I'm a hustler for the second project. Even though the company that I was with didn't believe that we should go in that direction, I was adamant about it because I knew that I needed that type of record which could play in the clubs, play on the radio, but also show that I come from the streets. Like, shit wasn't easy for me. I'm not no, like, I'm not no pop kid, girl. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not right. that type of kid. Like, they got to see what type of dude I, I really am. 
And I tried to show people on the first album. That's why I called it Split Personality and did have tracks on there that was hard showing my lyrical skills. But those tracks wasn't promoted. Those tracks ain't have money behind them. So you had to be like a fan that was locked into the album to understand that. Or right. else you would just think I was the hotel kid. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Facts. That's deep, man. Like, see, that's that sounds like the heart of a real MC. You know what I mean? Like, you got you wanted to satisfy your MC shit. Like, sure. and let niggas know, yo, I'm fucking nice. Like, fuck all of this money shit and broads and all of that type of shit. I mean, I'm sure it was cool, but at the same time, yeah, there's certain things that need to be satisfied when you when you cut from a deeper type of uh, claw. And that'd be the advice I give all of the new artists that's trying to get in the game. The first thing, even before you write your first rap or make your first beat or do whatever you're going to do, get in the studio, think about how you're going to get successful. The first thing you should determine is what you in it for. If you in it for the culture reasons, because you love hip hop, you love the culture and make you feel a certain type of way and you want to stick to the rules and the regulations of the culture. That's why you getting in it or you getting in it just because you see that it's a business and you can make a profit and you can make some type of money. Determine what reason you getting in it first and foremost right? and make every decision after that based on what you in it for. Don't play like back and forth. Don't play ping pong and keep jumping back and forth. Like one minute is for the culture. Next minute I need a check. So I'm going to do this, but then I'm back to the culture after that. But then after right. that, I'm back on this side. It's like you, it's too Pick much bouncing side. back and forth. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's going to cause a lot of confusion. And it's going in the long run, cause you to be in a predicament that you wish you wasn't in and you don't understand why you in it. So the First and foremost, you need to realize what you in it for the culture or business reasons and make all your decisions based on that. And those be the people that's most successful. All of the people that stick to the culture reasons, they might not like um, instantly be successful. It might be a longer grind. But once they get there, there's nothing that could take it away. And they seem like, like invincible. And then, you know what I'm saying? You got the other dudes that do it for business reasons. They don't give a fuck about the culture. They don't care about no rules and regulations. They tarnish anything at any given time as long as there's better money in it. And they always do that. And they better off. And even people in the culture respect them. Straight culture heads that respect that businessman, not for his culture reasons, but just they respect the fact that money. he put his mind to just focusing on money and actually executing and just straight sticking to that never bouncing back and forth never giving a fuck just focusing straight on money and getting to it they respect that so regardless of what you in it for is is is, is like you need to understand first and foremost and that'll help you um make better decisions in the business no that's real talk right there that's real talk shit um So I hear you say a lot of times, like you the reason that all this battle rap started. Are we talking about the battle with you and uh freeway back in the days? Is that is that the battle that may have inspired Smack? Or, or are you just talking about your well, battle around the city in general? Me battling period, like a lot of people be uninforming, um, misinterpreting what I'm saying. I didn't start battle rap, period. And I know battle rap in the beginning was based off entertainment. It was based off them rocking the crowds and rocking the parties and who could rock it the best. That was a form of battle rap. And that's how they say it started. The first but, biggest battle rap that everybody knows is Kumo D versus Busy B. That's that's where I would mark the start of, you know, real battle, battle rap. rap as we know it. Yeah, but when I came along, not only did I tell you about the figurative language back to back, line for line, but also um, um, mixing it up with the streets and actual disrespect. Like, hmm. you know what I'm saying? Them dudes had a little more respect for each other. It was just like they was battling with the art to see who was better. But to take it to the streets, like actual street battle rap, you saying a bunch of street shit and disrespecting niggas and murdering niggas and saying you would blow a nigga head off and 
you will smack the shit out his mom and <laughs> you'll fuck his baby mom in front of his girlfriend or yeah, some crazy shit. You'll say anything right. crazy out your mouth. That form of battle rap. I'm saying like I started that and I made that famous. Mm. That's what I brought to the table and made popular. And I was doing that all in the streets, all on and DVDs. What you call that? Disrespectful battle rap. What were we call it? It was it was it was on DVDs. It was forms of me doing that even on beat. Even when I wasn't actually battling, I was doing that, punching every line and disrespecting niggas and talking crazy. And even if you rapped at the time, you felt like I was coming at you at some point and I wasn't coming directly at you, but you just felt like that from my energy and that form of energy. Nobody never felt it before. The first person that was even punching and, 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 and piecing up them type of syllables like that, you could say, you know what I'm saying, was... You know what I'm saying? Um, Big Daddy Kane, Rock Kim, they was doing the hair and there. But the most person that I really got inspired from was Lil Finesse. He was the first one really, really punching and piecing up most of the syllables. So, and I love Finesse. That's the homie. So let me give you an example of something that's from like the 80s or early 90s, like back in the day. He'll say like, it, like if we bad, he could battle, I let you pick the winner. Now in the bat, the this is back in the day, and the flow start from pick. So the winner is back there, but the flow start from pick the winner. So we could battle. I let you pick the winner. I drop heavy shit like I had bricks for dinner. So pick the winner, bricks mm -hmm. for dinner. That's a four syllable piece up. Way back in the day. Right. So if somebody rhyming one syllable in 2021 and people is accepting it, when somebody like Lord Finesse was piecing up four syllables back then, and not only piecing up four syllables, but actually using figurative language because he dropped heavy shit like he had bricks for dinner. So just imagine if you ate bricks, how heavy your shit would be. Yeah. <laughs> That's figurative language. Mm -hmm. So not only was he punching, but he also was piecing up a bunch of syllables back then. But Lord Finesse didn't follow the next one with a bar like that and then follow the next one with a punch like that. Like he would do it whenever he felt like it. You know what I'm saying? But I was inspired from that. Then Big L come. Big L start putting punches same together. Camp, same D-I-T-C. Yeah, but it was sporadic. It wasn't like back to back. But what I'm wasn't... saying is they from the same camp. For sure, for sure. Martin S and, and, and Big L, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. for sure. For sure. So, um, you know, those was inspirations, but I come with this back to back every single line and doing it in the streets and disrespecting niggas and battling. And me doing that is what made it popular in the streets to industry niggas. Anybody that heard about it, wanted to see it, wanted to experience in it, wanted to experience it and it was big. But once the freeway tape hit and it got out to the streets, it was like the first time people was actually able to see it that wasn't there. And mm -hmm. actually able to see it on tape and see two dudes that they recognize outside of battle rap. Like, not just two dudes you don't know, just right. from the corner, just battling. It's like two dudes in the industry and Jay-Z there, Swiss Beats there. There's a lot of bosses there and they actually battling. So it was people first time to actually see that energy and experience that on tape. So after that, that's what influenced all of these dudes to know that it was money and battle rap and want to start these leagues and start giving people the opportunity to battle on tape and get money from it. Um, it was no way for them to see that money could come from it before that. But once they seen the freeway tape, they realized that it was like a lot of money in it. And if we build this up, we could get super money. And that's the reason why all of these leagues started. And now they actually are getting money and giving battle rappers money to be able to battle rap when that wasn't available before. And a lot of these battle rappers think because they came when the league already existed and started battling that they played a part. Of course you did, but you came after these leagues already was ex existed and was already giving money out. I'm talking about I played the part to make these leagues be able to be created to even get investors to get money, period. And that's the difference. No, that's real shit. Right there. That's real shit. And in this modern day age, I came back and did the most. Um, sold the most pay-per-views out of anybody. All these dudes trying to talk about they got all these battles and they got all these views. These is battles that they just did and they directly put on YouTube. I never had that type of battle. All my battles was pay-per-view. 
So that mean the core audience and the people had to pay to view it. And then they put it up later on YouTube. These dudes battles went straight to YouTube. So that's why you might see like it seemed like they getting a response or a certain amount of views, but they not really. I sold the most pay-per-views ever and sold the most tickets. The biggest events and arenas that they ever booked for battle rap was during my events. And I sold the tickets out in the quickest time ever in battle rap. So they not talking about those things. They not talking about the fact that I let people know that you was even able to get a quarter million dollars in battle rap. People thought that was impossible. When mm. they was offering me 20000 they were saying I should take that because that's the most you ever going to be able to get in battle rap. They never mm. even thought that this amount of money was available because they uninformed. I'm the, I'm the one that let people know that it was more money available and letting the investors know that there's more people interested in battle rap so that we can invest more. Since I've been back in battle rap, you see all of the leagues changing. You see more investors now is apps and they got apps that you can download and now they on caffeine and they getting all these different types of deals and more entertainers coming out and it's just way more shit going on in battle rap than ever before since I've been back. You want to know why? Because the investors is watching me and they seeing the views I'm doing. They seeing the type of success I'm getting. They seeing that there's money in it. And that's why I'm trying to encourage the rest of the battle rappers to get on their job because if they do, then more shit have come to the table. But they playing with it and they hating on me, a nigga that's only doing positive shit for the culture. And they bigging up a nigga that ain't doing nothing but just taking away from the culture and at, at any given time a flip on anybody in the culture for their position. Like, if they get the opportunity to get a deal and put out a hotel, they definitely going to do it. And they're going to keep going in that direction. They're not going to be fighting with the labels to try to do some hard shit that represent the culture. They're not going to be fighting for years to battle their cell phone albums and keep the culture alive. And they're not going to be dealing with every battle owner and all of the big niggas and battle rap and sparring with them and giving. They're not going to be doing all that. They're going to just keep dropping these type of records, getting the money and acting like they're an industry nigga because they're not really like as dedicated as they make y'all think. It's just this this is the only option. So well, they making it so they making themselves seem like they only give a fuck about the culture, but they really don't. Like I do. I got other options. I got wild shit going on right now as you speak. You could pull up in the last couple of days. I got wild other shit going on. Projects, music. I'm on the drink champs. It's not even about battle rap. It's about something completely different than what we talking about now. I, I just heard you just on drink champs. Hold up. So, it's like I got a lot of other shit going on, and I don't got to just do battle rap. I'm just coming to battle rap to better the culture, to prove that I'm the best and want to inspire people to just be the best, not be all friendly and try to be a group. Be competitive. You can be friendly and still be competitive at the same time. You can have respect for another MC and still be competitive at the same time. That's what hip-hop is about. That's what the dudes was doing that I looked up to. The dudes that inspired me to want to rap was on that tight tip. So that's that's the essence of it. You can't lose that just because more money involved. Yeah, you could get to the bag. You could get to the money. But you can't forget about the rules and regulations of the culture and about what is required to be a real artist. You mm -hmm. kind of, to me, described um, Hitman Holler in a way. And I'm not trying to down him or nothing like that, but he got on the show while and now, and he's continuing to do that. You know what I mean? Like, that's, a, that's something outside of battle rap for him. That's a good lane. You see what I'm saying? So to me, that's similar to like when you say, yo, if, if if one of these dudes could get a hotel, they'd do that and they'd keep going down that lane. You know what I mean? Like if he can keep going down that um that TV road and all that, I'm sure he's gonna keep doing it. He said he had, was just came from BET and all that type of shit. Um so that definitely lands credence to what everything that you were just saying. I don't hear you. You, yo, something happened to your mic. Wait, hang on. Yeah, okay, there you go. You should be able to talk now. You're unmuted. 
Talk. Let me hear you. I don't hear you now. I don't know if it's, uh, sound check. You can hear me though, right? You hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, uh, come out and come back in or something like that. Like re-click the link or something. Sometimes he should be bugging out. I don't know why. Yeah. Patreon, if you're just joining us. Uh, I was talking with Cassidy. He said, unplug the headset and plug it back in. Okay, I'll tell him that when he comes back. Should he unplug it or unplug it? God level. Just I'm just checking. Yeah, I hear you now. All right. We back. There we go. All right. So yeah, I was just saying that, you know, that kind of speaks to what you were saying. Uh as far as dudes finding another lane and like, oh yeah, let's shit. Let's go down this road. Like, like. This yeah, is, they can. This that they, shit. Yeah, they can't wait to do that. That's what they really want to do. I mean, they really want to be famous, want to be in the industry. That's how they really want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not really shocked that. Slight resentment there when they're not. Yeah, and I'm not really shocked that when they do get any opportunity, where anything seems like they're doing something industry, whether it's like being the extra on while and out. Well, there's like getting some extra role or something, they'll brag about it and they'll talk about it and they'll make it seem like they don't so much because that's what they really want to do. They really want to shit on battle rappers. They don't really give a fuck about the culture. They really want to be not in the culture. They just can't wait for the opportunity to get out of it. And they hate the fact that I got the opportunity to get out of it and I'm still supporting. I'm still repping. They know they wouldn't and that's what make them feel some type of way. So, you said you were just on drink camps, and I think my man said that you were telling a story about some shit, Madison Square Garden, R. Kelly, some hammers. <laughs> <laughs> what what happened? <laughs> what happened? At, at the garden with the hammers and how the hell you get hammers into the garden well you know we were some sneaky guys back then <laughs> we, had to, we, had to, we had to figure out a lot of shit back then man you know i know and, niggas that used to take shit apart little 22s put it in the boot and shit like that put it back together when they get in the club is that now you know like um at this particular time um I, I can't even tell you, but we was able to be sneaky and get it in there somehow, some way. We hey, was able to get a lot of them in there. <laughs> we was performing. It was just like a, it was like a, a certain time, and we was able to, you know, the the way we was able to maneuver the V, we was able to get them in there. So, mm-hmm. and this was before I caught my case, before I got in an accident. Like this one, I was really wilding more. Like you know what I'm saying? This is when I was like at a, a, a wilder point. But this was the first time that I was gonna perform with him. And um, we go backstage, I run into his team. They tell me that we gotta just, you know, there's a certain time we gonna get on. This how it's gonna go. So we like, all right, cool. So we go to this bathroom, it's like a backstage bathroom. And we go in there and start rolling up and start smoking and just chilling in there, me and my team. And while we in there, um, we hear like the performance, the, the noise, the crowd and shit. And a few seconds later, our Kelly people's running there and they like, like going crazy. Like, uh, oh, yo, 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 this shit crazy. Yo. Like, I'm like, what the fuck? What happened? And they talk about his, like a problem and his beef and niggas is pepper spraying and niggas is doing this and all that. So we thought it was chaos. So I gave him some burners. I was trying to give them burners so that they could hold it down, get the problem over with so that I could perform with R. Kelly. 
I ain't had no idea that they was beefing with Jay-Z and the whole shit that I found out later that was going on. I ain't know it was that. I was just in the bathroom waiting to perform with R. Kelly for the first time and just was holding his team down. You know what I mean? And the same way, like, if I was in a... The same way, like... The niggas that you didn't really know, though? Because I ain't gonna lie, I'm very reluctant to to get my... I know them. I I don't really know them like that, but I know them. I know they, like... I know them. Like, I know that they are Kelly, like people's like they like you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. uh oh okay you hear me yeah. they've been there since day one they really his peoples so i knew that you know what i mean and those was the peoples that i was dealing with to initiate me performing with them so i know if they saying is an issue is really an issue they were the ones that set the whole shit up right so i'm just That's trying to get on stage with jay-z and them I'm just trying to get on stage and make it make sense. So that's the reason why I did that. You know what I mean? And just, just like if I was in Chicago or, you know what I mean, somewhere else, and my team going through something and niggas got pressure on us and I run down on them and they Chicago niggas. And I'm like, yo, I'm going through something. I want them to hold me down the same way. Like, that's the reason why you got to tap into niggas that's from where you going so that you can have that advantage. So that's the only reason why I just, you know what I mean, show love. But um, I ain't really wanted to get messy or nothing like that. You know what I mean? I just was trying to make sure that they was safe. And um, that's how this shit went, man. But that was a long so time ago. crazy happened, right? Did anybody get shot or? Nah, nah, nobody. Nothing ain't happened. And um, everything was cool. I ain't get to perform, though. I never, I still, until this day, I never got to perform the song with him on stage ever. Hey, word. Nah. That's crazy. And now and I do it. I do the song at all my shows. He pretty much do the song at all his shows, but we never got to perform it together. Wow. And would you want to right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at, listen, I you know, I, yeah. I I'm going I ain't going to front like I know America has had no problem with separating one's deeds from their art before and now all of a sudden you know we live in a time where they're trying to group it all together you know what i mean see that's the weird thing because if you know a little bit of information it might seem cool to do that but if you would do like me that's been in the industry and know a lot of information about a lot of different people um Every artist might not do what R. Kelly accused of, but they might be guilty of doing something else that I know that might be just as crazy, but just something different. Right. Then another artist might be victim of doing something else. Like, you know what I'm saying? He ain't doing neither what neither one of them doing, but he doing something else that's just as bad. Just as bad. Just and as wow. Like, it's crazy. Like, and it's like the majority of the people that be in high positions that's like, <laughs> like, gatekeepers that's like that play a part in the industry got skeletons in their closet and then did shit before so if you're going to be picky and choosing and say oh i'm not going to work with this person but i'm doing this and i'm not going to do this but i'm doing this it's like this is what running I'm- around like a chicken with your head cut off trying to figure out who not to work with and what to do and you wouldn't probably be able to work with nobody you would just be a solo artist just doing shit by nor, yourself nor would you be able to listen to certain music if i have to morally do a checklist on every motherfucker whose record that i listened to that i may have loved in the past and I now i listen to nothing out, i can add now i can't listen to nothing nothing like, like, like nothing first of all nobody's perfect i'm not and, and in no way am i trying to defend anything that r kelly may or may not have done i don't know i wasn't there um all i'm saying is this motherfucker got some hits that's undisputed like and if we're gonna just now act like he don't got hits and that he didn't have mad soundtracks to your life that you fucking loved and all of that type of shit and you happen to have a song with this man um yeah we can we you know it's just funny how people will flip like that i'm the type you know i started as a dj you know what i mean so there's times where if I if I have to DJ right now, God damn it, I'd play some fucking R. Kelly. That's right. I said it. I said it. 
I mean, I, I play some people R. Kelly, and, Kelly and, you, and you motherfuckers will probably dance to it. Knock it there's off. some people that might say they want to do a song or wouldn't fuck with R. Kelly because of the accusations, but I'll go take a picture with the president or something. <laughs> you know, uh, could be a person that might have just like, I mean, it's just weird. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say about that shit, so man. That being, no. said, that being said, only thing I could be responsible to, for is myself, man. I can't right. really be responsible for another man's body and the decisions he make because he in his own place. All I could do is just know what I what I feel as though is right and wrong and just carry like that in my own life. Right. So now if you had the chance right now to perform with R. Kelly, both of y'all on stage together, not this COVID shit where y'all is like, you know, if y'all was together, would you be willing to do it? Would you Would you want to do that? Depends on the stipulations, man. Just depends on the situation. Just like with anything. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just depends on the details. But if I feel sense. like a part of you, you, the businessman is saying that. I feel like just the MC part of you absolutely wants to do that because, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's just my song. It's just like completing the song. There's a, a reason why I wrote the song. It just play a part in my life, and I love the song, and I know that he a part of it, so that's for that reason I would want to do it. Right. But you know what I'm saying? It don't got nothing to do with anything outside of that. You know right. I mean? Right. And that's all it got to be. That You know what I mean? It ain't got to be nothing else but that. If that's the only reason, then that's enough. You know what I mean? Like, you ain't got to explain a million things to these motherfuckers, man. And I'm not a prosecutor or a judge. It's not my up to me to like, you know what I'm saying, convict these dudes and none of that. And I'm not a juror. I'm not none of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's up to them to figure out whether this man did something or not. I don't got nothing to do with that. I just know before all these accusations came up, I was a super fan of his music. And I know that that was my first single and what it did for me. So right. that's all I can say on that. Yeah, well. Big joint. Something to be proud of, regardless. Plus, when you from the hood, man, you start looking at it different as you grow. But when you from the hood, I know a lot of niggas like that. Well, not saying that, you know, allegedly, but I know a lot of niggas that was old niggas, old hustling niggas getting money. That was above age that was dealing with other the young girls that was bad from the hood back in the day. And I ain't used to look at it like nothing because I was young. I used to just look at it like it was just some normal hood shit. Wow, niggas in the hood being that bad, man. Like, niggas gotta, you can't just come at one nigga. You gotta come at everybody. You know what I'm saying? Even people that be coming at this nigga was these girls and shit. It's just like, man, crazy world we living in, man. I can't just point the finger at one nigga, man. Tell me about you said you was wilding. You was wilding, and then you had your accident. Tell me about the accident. What happened? Um, my car accident. Yeah. The, yeah. Know. Well, the car accident came after. Well, how many in, accidents have you had? Um. I had a few accidents in my life. Nothing serious. Only the one serious one. Right. But the accident came after the case. Um, After I dropped the I'm a Hustler album, I was locked up for the murder and the two attempted murders. Right. Once I, once I got that out the way and I came home, I started working on the Bars album. And once I started working on my Bars album and was almost finished is when I got in the accident. Went into a coma, you know what I mean, for over a week, like nine days and had amnesia, lost my memory. So damn it took me time to like recover and get my memory back. Like even big songs like Hotel that we was just talking about, I forgot all of the words to it. Whoa. You know, when I came back home and they were showing me the video, it's like it's like a rare weird, weird feeling. It's like deja vu where you like know like damn I seen it before, but you just can't get it it was like that looking at my videos i knew i seen it and that was me because i could see that that's like had to be me and people telling me but i just don't remember it and i don't wow. remember none of the words 
I can't sing the words with myself. I don't know what I'm about to say. And it was like, where? How long did that last for? Um, well, it was like, uh, like the same way, like the outside of your body heal, same way your brain start healing when you suffer damage like that. Mm. So every day, every day, um, I would heal a little more, remember a little more and talking to my family, just seeing them, them saying stuff. Just start coming back. Telling me stories, watching videos, listening to my music, seeing pictures. All of that shit played the part. And um, I say like it took like fully like like two months after me being out the hospital for me to get enough of my memory back to remember like who I was to be able to move around. Wow. But I still ain't have I still ain't have it fully. It took a little more time for like most of my memory to come back. I still don't remember the actual crash though. Like from when I got in the car that, that night, I could remember that from when I got in the car that night, when the, the actual car that crashed, I could remember getting in the car and pulling off. And I could remember waking up out the coma. But in that space, I can't remember in that in between that still to this day. Nothing. Because I was going to ask you, like, is there anything that you might remember of being in a coma? Like, was it like a dream or any any kind of dreams you might have feel like you had? Or any spiritual experiences you just don't even remember? That's what I'm saying. It don't feel like nothing. It don't even feel like it feel like from my last memory when I got in the car. That's when everything stopped everything like you don't remember nothing and it just felt like the Man. next second like the next second you wake up out the coma it's like nothing in between that like nothing you can remember or there's nothing in it it's like maybe like you in a car like you know when you in a car and you driving and you remember yourself driving and you tired in the back seat then you doze off and you might doze off for five ten minutes then somebody wake you up you'll be here then you wake up and that's when, as soon as you wake up, you start remembering shit. But that five, 10 minutes that you dozed off, you don't know. It don't, if you didn't dream or you didn't think of nothing, it just wasn't nothing. You just remember right before you dozed off and then you remember just waking back up. And that's how it felt like that time. And it takes you to look at the clock or feel your body to kind of understand how much time then passed. Like you can't really tell, like, you got to look at a clock or understand the dates to be able to tell how much time you were asleep. Because you could doze off like that and somebody wake you up and it could be five years later. You just think because of the science you probably died or that's not possible, but you can't really tell. It's like, so right. that's how that shit was. Wow, man. That's wild shit, boy. Well, thankfully, you you came back. You got your memory back, you know what I mean? And you, your brain healed and now you able to still do what you've been doing. And this is another struggle that I went through that people don't understand. Like when I was in that coma, the doctors were saying I probably wasn't never going to be able to rap again. Because my Ooh. brain, like my brain was badly damaged. So if I do get back the normal, I'm probably not going to be the same. As far as like how I talk and how my thoughts come together, like I'm probably never going to be exactly the same. Mm. So it was like probably impossible for me to be able to rap like this again in the eyes. But you see, I come back out and now I wrote an album right away, right after I came out the coma and recovered and got a, the majority of my memory back. I finished the bars album and put it out, put out drinking two step. That's after the coma, after I lost my memory, I'm talking mm. about what I just went through and was able to put that level of music together right after that, right after they said I was never going to be able to rap again. So to do that, and then I had to go through, I told you I wanted the rap to be the best. So I don't want to just rap to get money. I don't want to just live off the fact that I was in an accident or I went to jail or just try to make a hit. Now nah, I want to be the best. So I had to lock back in to fully get my memory back. All of the tricks and the 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 little things that I did with the science, I had to remember that again, learn that all over, do that, I mean, grind, and get back into this place. So mm. that's another reason why I'm back in the battle rap, because when I battle rap before, that was all before my accident, before I went to jail for 
facing life. Before I went through life changing things, I was battle rapping before that. So now I want to get back um, hungry and in a place that I used to be. And it's going to take me actually doing it to get back there. And that's why I'm excited too, because I'm back in that place where I need to be just mentally as far as just wanting to crush a nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just back there. April 3rd. You and Hitman Holla. What what's gonna happen? What's your predictions? History gonna be made, man. Um, most views ever for a battle. Most people gonna be talking about it. Um, it's gonna be a movie, man. And um, I'm definitely gonna come to the table and do what I'm supposed to do. Bring to the table what I'm supposed to bring to the table. I just hope he don't fold up choke up or lose composure and can't contain itself and can't finish. But if he could hold it down and he could finish it, it should be a good battle. Even if he don't do good, just y'all seeing me wipe the floor with somebody when I was just um, underestimated and you know what I'm saying? Just to see me do that is just going to be enough in itself. So I really don't really care if he show up, what he do, if he perform, if he got lyrics, I just want him to complete it. Just make sure the battle is complete so people could fully see what I'm going to do to the ball. And I got a lot more planned after this, but I just want to let this go down first before I start telling you all these other big things that I got coming. But I got some big shit coming outside of Battle Rap. But this is first and foremost. I'm just about to crush this nigga, wipe the floor with him. Plus there's a bunch of other dope battles on the card that I want to see. You know what I mean? My my bro Jag is on the car battling old Red, so I can't wait to see that too. So I'm I'm excited. I can't wait till this day come, man. It's like it ain't that far away, but we got a little bit of time. So I'm just counting down the days and just getting prepared and getting ready to hit this stage and show people what I'm capable of. Did the face off provide you with ammunition? Specific ammunition that you felt like after that mm -hmm. happened, like, oh, you like you might have had some shit prepared already, you know what I mean? But it's like after that shit, like, oh, you know what? I know the type of shit that could push his buttons. Let me yeah, and that's what people don't understand the importance of the face off, too. Like, not only did it give me a bunch of rum shakers just off of, off of the moves <laughs> that he made and the shit that he did in the face off, but also it get not my fan base, but even his fan base looking at him different. So when he get on the stage, he got to play a lot of defense. He got a lot of explaining to do about <laughs> a lot of shit that he done already did, which is going to take away from him being able to come at me because he got to explain himself and why he do and say and act the way he act. And um, that's going to be a disadvantage for him. But I hope he don't try to skip around that and not address the fact and clean it up because then it's going to go even worse for him. So it's like... You got to address a few things and clean it up. But what you doing that is going to take away from you being able to take this shit I'm about to do to you. So I just want everybody to tune in, man. You can't miss it. Don't try to catch it later or hear about it later or think you. Nah, it's going to be like some crazy shit going down. It's going to be some historical shit. And you can't miss it, man. You got to be like watching it right then and there. Like you can't miss it. It's going to be big. So like April 3rd, Atlanta, Georgia, RBE, Cassidy, Larceny versus Hitman Holla. Man, it's going to be an event. For sure. I might have to come down and check it out. I'm not sure. I might have to come down and check it out. Um, it all depends. I just started shooting some shit. And they all real crazy with this COVID shit now. You know what I mean? With, with these sets and they don't want you to go nowhere and all this crazy shit. So I got to see what's up. It's going to be a movie though, man. If you could possibly make it. Yeah, I'm going to see what's up. It's going to be crazy, man. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, Anything you want to, uh, you know, let the people know before we get out of here? Um, I just dropped three new projects. The first one was the science. The next one was the formula. And the one after that was the wise man. Whole projects, whole albums available on all platforms. All of the, all of the joints is crazy. 
nothing but bangers, man. Y'all gotta check it out. Tap in if you ain't already hear it. Just released a new video on World Star the other day. They're like two million views in a day. It was going crazy over there. What's the name of it? It's called Fuck It Up. It's featuring Trophy. Trophy Boy. Um artist down with my team. He from Camden represent Camden. It's me and him on that record. And it's going stupid right now. And that's on the project The Wise Man that I dropped. So um um the drink champs is out right now, and everybody tune into that that ain't see that. All these other interviews that I'm doing about this battle, tap into that if you ain't tuning into that. And get your tickets. If you anywhere around Atlanta, you need to pop up. Um, is that Believe? It's going to be a movie, man. There's going to be a lot of people coming out. Shit is going to be big for the culture. So, oh, and I just I just um released my new CBD line. Everybody, uh -huh. that, everybody that's interested in CBD. Um, healing your body, healing your mind, getting relaxed, getting in a better place. It's called Goat Gang CBD. GoatGangCBD.com. Y'all can look at it. Um, we releasing it on the second, definitely. Like um, worldwide distribution, and I'm gonna have a pop up stand at the battle. So anybody come to the battle, y'all gonna be able to see the merchandise first and foremost right there. Oh. Oh, yeah, and um, CassidyTheHustler.com. That's for all of the merchandise, the bars is back gear, the goat gang gear, all of the clothes, um, all of the merchandise. Uh, we even got face masks, hats, dad hats, snapbacks, jackets, sweatsuits. The hustler or hustler? It's D-A-H-U-S-T-L-A. Cassidy the Hustler, D-A-H-U-S-T-L-A. Oh. Hang on. The H U. H U what? D A H U S T L A. Cassidy the dot com. Oh, got you. Cassidy the hustler dot com. It's on your screen right now. Go we'll check them out. We'll put, sure. link, we'll put a link in the description of the show. And the CBD, the CBD, the CBD line is goatgangcbd.com. G O A T G A N G C B D dot com. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go check it out. Go cop from the man. Go uh stream his latest projects. I love the titles of them joints too. Thank you, man. Thank you. Science. What you the say? Formula, formula and the wise man. And the wise man. Yes, sir. You need to throw an applause after that. Hey, yo, my brother, I, this has been a great one. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out to sit down. And uh, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely, brother. Um, anytime, feel free to come back whenever you like. You know, and, I, and I'm mad we didn't get the busted up. We were supposed to um fuck around a little more last time I seen you, but you know all that commotion kind of shortened the you mean. Yeah, the next yeah, time. Yeah, 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 no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Next well, time we good, run into each other. Good seeing you the brief time that I did. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, and, uh, sure. yeah, I'll check you out again. But yeah, thank you, my brother. Much love to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Cassidy. Peace, guy. And there you have it. And there you have it. Oh, shit. Now I see that. Are you going to battle again before the year is out? It's going down in ATL. Yes, uh, Miss Ravioli. Is it open to the public? Yeah, you can buy your tickets. It's absolutely open to the public. It's going to be a movie. It ain't going to be no quarantine in that bitch. They're going to have at least 2,000 people up in that motherfucker. Uh, so you get ready. Why, well, thank you, Miss Ravioli. Um, listen, make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to, uh, you know, subscribe to the Patreon because y'all is the only ones that could see, uh, could see these lives. 
unless you know me personally and I sent you the link, like my man Stove God. Um, I did not put that pink collar on that dog back there. Just let the record reflect in case somebody saw that and knows that that's a male dog. The females of the of this house did that nonsense. But they will never get Anubis. They will never get Anubis. Y'all can have Bruno. But anyway. <laughs> Listen, I thank y'all for joining. Um, for joining us on this one once again. Once again, go to CassidyTheHustler.com. CassidyTheHustler.com. As well as goatgangcbd.com goatgangcbd.com uh shit if you like to uh if you like to donate to the show go to cash.me slash you know what I mean dot com um health alliance network for your telemedicine needs Get you a $10 discount with that code Lord Jamar. Just go to www.lordjamar.healthalliancenetwork.com. Put in the discount code Lord Jamar and you will pay $35 a month for a telemedicine plan that covers up to 10 people in your household. That's right. Up to 10 people in your household. Um... We will be back soon. Uh, I got a show to do. I saw a video where uh, Dr. Umar said he lost respect for Lord Jamar. That should be the thumbnail. And now, and now I'm losing all kinds of uh, rest in relaxation because you know dr umar lost respect for me he lost respect for me well i'll talk about it another day not tonight so join me when i come back to talk about things uh i love y'all thank you for subscribing thank you for joining uh digger godfrey they will be back you know i do these by myself sometimes once again for you not a mean godcast i am lord jamar and for her whole god cast family peace